All right. Well, we are back on another episode of the Fashion Hive podcast. Thankful to have one of my amazing co-hosts, Skylar. And then with us today on today's episode is going to be Paige Petrasso with Labeled Rosso based out of Boston, Massachusetts, Boston. So Paige, do you want to jump in a little bit and tell us why, what Labeled Rosso is? And then I'm also interested in the name itself. So, so the brand is kind of like, it's getting defined as like I'm moving through like each collection. And um, right now it's very haute couture, lots of handwork, lots of beading. Um, I think that right now we're in a day and age where fashion is like, let's push out as much as we can. And I think going back to those slower roots is like, it's what got fashion here in the first place. So I'm interested in learning um, all types of couture techniques and bringing them into my own practice. And the brand name kind of came out originally it was just Rosso. Yeah. Um, and I had done my branding in high school. I was like, I'd love to have a company that you know, as part of me, like that could live on past, you know, whatever legacy or whatever. And so Rosso's really brand and like it's been branded and it's very broad because if you look up Rosso, it's a uh, like wine because mm. um, it's Italian. And so I was like, I need something that kind of hones back into like fashion. So labeled lots of people do, you know, so-and-so the labeler. And I was like, OK, I think that labeled Rosso or anything like along those lines could be really cool and can tie back into a branding like as we get more and more into the brand like if it's a more one-off piece the branding and logos and like the tag can be something like a gold tag and that's like a more one-off piece or like if it's something that's easily manufactured that's going to get a red tag so it's still got that like bold nature but within the brand it can be like more specialized okay so in terms of getting labeled rosso off the ground when did that start? When did when did you decide that you wanted to become a fashion designer? And then when did you really start your brand? Um, I kind of knew in high school that I loved designing clothing, but originally I went to school for business. Mm. Um, and I just thought, you know, I'll get into the fashion part of it later on. But as I was going through the business major, I was like, you know what? I feel like it's important for me to get the language of the industry down so that when I go and produce ideas or when I bring ideas to designers, I'm speaking their language. Um, I feel like business skills you can pick up really quickly with like online courses and like reading books, but really understanding like the industry language is like what drew me to like pursuing fashion design as like a major and then also a career. And um, so in high school, like I said, I kind of had an idea that's in the direction I wanted to go but when in my first year of college in art school I did I did like a soft launch of like um, just illustrations of mine on t-shirts and I screen printed them so I learned like a lot about manufacturing product management um, product design knowing that okay if I'm gonna have a clothing brand that I want to be accessible to like anybody I have to like cater to all sizes and really understanding like okay what does this mean now for like a bottom line so um, I kind of put a hold on it as I was going through the major and because um, it's a lot doing like school work and then also trying to manage that and so while I was taking that break, I was like, okay, how am I going to really define the brand? Because when I launch it again, I need it to be my vision. So that's how we're here with Labeled Rosso and in Kansas City. Okay, so what I was curious about is, so you're from Boston. What led you to come to Kansas City Fashion Week when you're all the way out there? Um, that's a good question. I actually, one of the alumni from my school, she has a CFDA Connects like profile and her first name begins with a J and so K was right after. I was just flipping through and I was like, Kansas City Fashion Week. I've never, like I didn't know that Kansas City had a fashion week. And so- Most I, don't. <laughs> yeah, so I looked into it more and the designer application was still open. I think there was like a week left and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna put in an application. The thesis project was still underway so mm. I kind of really pushed into it with my senior thesis show in mind but then also when I got the acceptance I was like okay let's really 
push into the collection a lot more. So it's been exciting to sit with it for a full year, really develop into it, and um, yeah, show it. Like last night was really cool. The reaction of the crowd was like exciting. So oh, that's really cool. Um, so is this the first fashion show you've ever shown in? Yeah, besides the school fashion show, but that's like a course requirement. So yes, this is the first one. Mm -hmm. Are there going to be like any shows closer to Boston that you plan on showing in or anything? I would love to show in New York. I feel like New York is a beast in itself, though. Um, I think it's finding out what company you want to go under. Um, and I feel like I want to wait on that. This has been such a well-oiled machine, so I feel like the expectations are really high now. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I'm, I just want to be careful with going to New York because there are so many smaller shows. And um, but it is like you can go and do like five shows in New York in like the same week, and they're all like on the same street. So there are pros and cons. Like Boston's 1,200 miles away, and mm -hmm. New York is from New York it's only a five hour drive so yeah so walk us through why you haven't mentioned Boston as a as a place where you would want to show Boston right now I think especially since the pandemic there has been like a lull with the Boston Fashion Week um, they still have like these VR and this augmentive reality it's just if I was more of a conceptual designer and all I did was 2D work and um I really wanted to show in that way. I feel like that would be such a successful place because it is so interactive with media. But I like working in the physical and like I want to be able to show my work to, you know, people and potential buyers. And so that's where my um, personal like route is taking me. I love Boston. I think it's an amazing place to design. There's like a lot of deep rooted history there, especially with fashion and art. But um, as far as like physically showing, there really isn't much opportunity right now. Well, and I think that that speaks volumes to you as an individual and, and really trying to get your brand branched out, right? Like you could show in your backyard being a Boston fashion show if that was, but I'm sure at some point you would have found yourself somewhere else anyways, um, because that's where you're going to get the, you, where you could build your name and brand recognition and that's where you can get more followers and, and potentially more clients or customers. Um, but I also think, you know, you could have sat back and said, well, that's a four or five year, you know, well, I'll wait for Boston to come back. Um, so you've shown in Kansas City Fashion Week now. You, you have your school fashion show underneath your belt. Where do you see yourself going next? Um, I'm going to design a new concept and collection. I think what I've really learned with this entire experience, I've came up with the concept and the idea a year ago so I've been sitting with the entire collection for a year yeah. and you know the entire theme of the collection was the death card in tarot and that is about doors opening and sometimes doors closing and when a door closes another one opens and I really feel like in true death card fashion it, like the bow tie on this door is like we're done with it and I'm ready to move on so I'll be I'm starting to like already think about what's next you know where do I want to take the next collection? Is it going to be color focused? Is it going to be silhouette focused? Is it going to be lots of handwork? Is it going to be experimental, you know, with the transforming garments and stuff? Um, I'm not sure yet, but I'm definitely designing into a new concept. That's what's next. So not to steal Skylar's question, but Skylar, I know you had a question regarding a quote that was found was it on the social media or was it on the web page? Yeah, so website? I was doing my research and I was looking on like your website, I believe, and it was talking about, I believe it's don't fear what's in the cards is what it was. And I was just curious like what that means to you, like if you could explain what it means to you. Yeah, so when I was designing this collection, I really only knew that I wanted to do a transforming garment and that's about it and sure. um, when I brought the idea to my professor she was like okay this is great but how are you going to bring visuals to this so you need to design you're gonna be sitting in with it for a full you know academic year and she was like you don't want to fall short with like oh the concept is great but you don't want the entire garments to be all transforming pieces you know and I was like okay that's a good point you know um, 
So I started thinking, I did a mind map and I, transformation was in the center and I kind of started branching out. So um, I started with like my own personal journey going from fashion or going from business to fashion. And I was like, okay, that's personal. It kind of hits a dead end though. There's no visuals that go with that. And then um, another one was metamorphosis with like butterflies and chrysalises. And I was like, okay, I like that, but it's been done a lot before. I feel like I can push it a little farther. Like there's something that I have, and I know that's out there that I can like really tap into. And so I kept doing the mind map and I landed on the death card and tarot. And so really kind of like bouncing back to that personal journey of like, you know, if you feel like some place in your life needs to be like let go of, like that's okay because something good is around the corner. And so that's what don't fear what's in the cards means. Cause when they do a tarot card layout and like you get your cards picked and stuff and so yeah that's what I was really inspired by and that's why I named the collection don't fear what's in the cards oh I love that I love that so much because like me personally I'm like big on like the angel numbers and like mm-hmm. the manifestation stuff yeah. and so like to me I feel like something similar to that card specifically is like the angel number 555 for mm-hmm. change you know so I don't know when you were just talking about that that's immediately what I could think of like season of change new things coming better things yeah Yeah. and it's exciting because like I do feel like this collection has been really a launching pad but I feel like it's run its course I'm okay to let it go and now start like moving on into a new collection because now I don't feel like I'm within the realm of you know the tarot card inspiration so yeah yeah it's run its course yeah okay so on the topic of your pieces and and this is not even your pieces uh, just the makeup uh, concepts that you had that were shown did you come up with the whole eyelashes as they close was that your idea or was that the style team um i when i was thinking about like the looks in full Um, I was just looking, feathers were a big thing. I should just start off with that. I did a feather bridal gown my junior year and I was like, I'm doing feathers. I love feathers. I love the way that they move. I love how they add visual weight without actually being heavy. And um, so I was like, how can I take feathers and maybe the garments that don't really have feathers on them, like add feathers to it. And so I was looking up feather accessories and Valentino in, I believe it was 2019, they did feather eyelashes, but they were like, spikier and more full and I was like okay that's not really the look I'm going for I want them to be longer I want the feathers to be chunkier and um, so I kind of drew a lot of inspiration from Valentino with uh, the feather lashes I just remember so I'm seeing that night you know I, I was sitting there and I could just hear everyone go look at her eyes look at her eyes look at her eyes like and I I mean, the pieces were great, but there were several times where people were just mesmerized by the model. I mean, like, that was execution. Like, you could have almost sent someone down there and just a blank canvas and done that, and I think you would have... I mean, it was amazing. And Thank you. You know, to sit here and say, you know, you can put a lot of things on a runway in California from a California perspective and people are going to, it's going to, your collection is going to resonate with them. Same thing with New York or, you know, out East, right? You took a coast, granted, you know, you're not saying that the inspiration was coastal themed, right? Mm-hmm. By, by any means, but to a certain extent, like you and I were talking, like this is probably a decent, the farthest that you've gone, you know, yeah. away from Boston. Um, and, and so looking at that, you know, it's like you could have, gotten in front of this audience here in Kansas City and they may not have resonated with your pieces but I think it's the complete opposite yeah you have people talking today that are like wait she's from Boston like we gotta how is she coming back and you know like all of these different things that your pieces resonated with the audience and I think that that's huge because like I said fashion is so different you know from from California to the mm-hmm. middle I can only imagine, I'm sure you had, did did you have that thought in mind that like... Oh yeah, I knew that like, I was probably going to be the fresh meat on Mm. the scene. Um, And that was one thing like, I had flown out here the 9th and the 10th and I was nervous. I was like anxious the entire time and 
so this time around I had my mom with me and she was backstage with me the entire time and the models oh my god they were so sweet and just the entire experience has been like very welcoming and warm so um I was kind of feeling like I know like a lot of these designers have shown multiple times um people are probably in the audience for them I've only got really two people in the audience for me and that's okay um but it's like when I was thinking about this, when, even when I was doing the like idealization for the thesis collection, I was like, how am I going to grab somebody's attention, whether it's like the feather lashes or whether it's like the transforming garment? You could forget anything about me, you know, just what's the one thing that you're going to remember about, like about the collection, whether it's the feather lashes, whether it's like the, oh, do you, the chaps or, you know, all the beading of the girl that had like the flowery things with the feathers poking out. That was cool, you know? So... It was really about like figuring out maybe many different facets of something that people could remember and really like honing in on that and like designing around it. Yeah, that's huge. And with the transforming garment, I thought that was so amazing. Thank you. And I was like, I had been sitting in the photography pit, but I could hear like around the room just everyone like gasp when it transformed because no one was expecting it. Mm -hmm. And I had seen like, the piece that it transformed to earlier in the day when they were taking photos so I wasn't expecting it either because I hadn't seen what it was before transformation yeah. so even I was like oh my gosh this is amazing thank you no it was really pretty I loved it thank you that one I I really enjoyed designing that it was hard to design because there are like the overdress is kind of like a boat or a moat that holds the underdress and so it was really playing with like okay so gravity is a thing let's work with it mm. let's figure out how if it's, I'm gonna put a ton of beading on there it'll add natural weight I really didn't want the dress to get stuck because I had seen some things on when I was doing research for transforming garments like things getting stuck or the models having to like brush it down and on the runway I was like no if it's gonna be done it needs to be done seamlessly people can't expect it um and so whenever I hear the oohs and ahs I'm like oh that's so cool like people are reacting to it so even with like the revealing pants that wasn't originally in my senior thesis collection but I knew I wanted to do kind of like a teaser with like some type of before and after and then the real before and after so that people were kind of like caught off guard i know you wowed the crowd i mean that was uh, there were as always there were a lot of good designers but it's always amazing to see the the talk after it's just like anything else right like there's a sporting event and they're talking about did you see what you know patrick mahomes did or tom brady did mm -hmm. like there's that talk there's always that talk in the fashion industry as well you know like that that piece last night you know and so mm -hmm. it warms my heart knowing that someone from boston literally came in and mic dropped basically you know like because <laughs> that's what it felt like you know like mm -hmm. it was i mean it was killer um i mean there were people in the back row you probably didn't see it but like there were literally people in the back row that we had to tell to sit down because uh, like they were just standing ovation until like the music had already started for the next designer you know oh, and cool. so um you know it was just again we're like okay okay you know like mm -hmm. but like it, that, that was it so like that's so cool you killed it it's fun to like hear afterwards because you only get like the glimpse of like or the audio of what's happening and so you know hearing that is like okay cool like I came here I did what I wanted to do and I did it yeah like in a way that people will probably remember which is exciting absolutely so do you see yourself coming back to Kansas City oh of course okay I know we had talked at media night because mm -hmm. you're dedicated to the cause and you flew in early and then you're, you stayed after as well, stayed after your showing. Um, what was your favorite part of Kansas City? Um, so when I first came here, I was just shocked at how much parking there was in this city. <laughs> there is so, like I was walking by an empty parking lot. I was like, oh my God, like how and then three dollars an hour for parking oh my god i would kill like it's 40 hours in like an hour or 40 dollars an hour in boston it's expensive oh my and then gosh. if you're double parked in the north end they'll ticket you for 90 bucks because like the streets are so narrow so i was just shocked one about how much parking there is but then there's so much art here that you wouldn't think that it's an artist city but it really is and it's exciting because 
I mean, you think like, oh, Chiefs won the Super Bowl last year, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, I knew that there was some type of sporting that um, like Kansas City was known for, but I didn't know that it was like there was a lot of art that runs kind of deep. Like even on you're walking by and there's so many stickers on like the light posts and like on the electrical boxes and in Boston, I feel like we're kind of getting there. Like a lot of artists are like being commissioned to like paint on the light boxes and the electrical boxes, but and, like murals are going up. But here there's like so many murals on the walls and all the restaurants have like so much nice art and it's so exciting and cool. So I think that was the most surprising thing about Kansas City. And then also the amount of parking that there is. It's just crazy coming from such a small city that has no parking. All things being relative, because Kansas Cityans do not get us started on parking downtown. Like, we're like, there's no parking. <laughs> and just wait till the Royal State. Like, there's talks of the Royals moving. Because um, the stadium, like I told you at, at uh, Media Night, the stadium is like 30 minutes, not well, 20 minutes away from here. Mm-hmm. As we sit in the middle of downtown Kansas City. Um, and there's talks that it's going to come downtown. Oh, and no. everyone is like, well, where's all the parking going to go? What are we going to do? You know, yeah. like, because there's the T-Mobile Center. There's the, uh, if there was a Royal Stadium, we already have several other, you know, so it's like everyone is up in arms about that. So I'm yeah. just going to point them to this episode and say, hey, listen, we heard it from someone <laughs> out of town. There's a lot of parking there's here. So much and parking. there's a lot of cheap parking here. So. so cheap. It's like, I like we were walking by a parking lot and I was like, $3 an hour? What? Like you could park here overnight and not break your bank. It's crazy. (laughs) Whereas like most people Uber, like during the summer I was working in like outside the city, but I needed a car to get to the city. And I would hate moving my car because my, one of the streets, one of the only streets in Boston, I swear, it was just like, don't have your car there during like street cleaning and you won't get ticketed. So, but it was free parking. You didn't need a permit to park there. And so I would hate moving my car because I'd be like, I'm giving it my parking spot. And it's such like you're playing with like a dangerous game of like having to go either park in someone else's parking spot that is being paid for and then move your car before they get back or like just getting ticketed for towing. So it's crazy. The city has a lot of parking and you heard it here. I love that. <laughs> you looked right at the camera too. Yes, like, I did. Don't, <laughs> don't let anyone else tell you anything differently. We heard it from Boston. Yes. Which I'm sure, you know, Kansas Cityans just want to listen to everything Boston after years and years and years of Tom Brady. Oh, yeah. Beating Honestly, us over like, the head. I feel like he's in his flop era right now. <laughs> I'm not really a football fan, but like, what game was it? It was a couple of years ago. I feel like it was like 2016, the comeback with the Hawks that he ended up getting like benched for or whatever because he deflated the football yeah that one is like one of the only super bowl games and i'm like yeah patriots but other than that it's like <laughs> other than that i don't really care yeah, about. you don't really care that's awesome well we really do appreciate you coming on to the show and, and coming all the way out here to kansas city uh, is there anything else that we didn't address that you would for sure want to highlight i mean at the end of the day this podcast is is all about you so how can we yeah um to be honest, no, I think that we covered like a lot of my, you know, background and, you know, where I came from and like the inspiration behind the collection. So yeah, it's been exciting. It's been really cool to be here. I'll definitely be back. Probably not in spring because to develop a full nine piece collection in six months, that's a lot, but definitely in fall. Okay. Yes. I feel like it's going to be a fall winter, like annual season. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Well, and, and kudos to your support system that came out here. Yes. Shout out mom and Ricky. Ricky. <laughs> I still, so complete background or like complete inside joke here. But, you know, here in Union Station, the way Kansas City Fashion Week has it set up is that you can have vendor tables and, and all of these different things. And you had a vendor table mm-hmm. uh, the Wednesday night. And so uh, Paige and Ricky are, are standing behind the, and I had met Ricky at media night and we, yes. we kind of were just, you know, bullshitting or whatever and mm-hmm. you know, having a good time. And so then I walk up and walk, your uh, vendor table's all set up. And yeah, there was there's like little Hershey kisses. Hershey kisses set up and I'm like, Ricky, <laughs> give me a kiss. And so <laughs> he goes, you like this? <laughs> And I was like, oh, I meant one of those. <laughs> and he was like, and like he got the joke, but it yeah. was just hilarious because like he played it off perfectly. Like, yeah. <laughs> he thinks on his feet like that. He's super yeah. funny. Um, yeah, I was like, Hershey Kiss, like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, okay, I got it now. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it was funny. So, 
uh, again, totally like you had to be there. It's really not that funny, but um, Ricky is Ricky. Better come back and fall winner. That's oh, all I'm I, saying. <laughs> I'm gonna make him because he was like so helpful last night. I was like walking in heels, and I, he was like, "Let me carry the suitcase." I was like, "I'm not gonna right. say no." Yes, carry the suitcase, please. Yes, thanks, Ricky. Yes, thanks, Ricky. <laughs> thanks, Ricky. <laughs> Shout out, Ricky, <laughs> the unsung hero. Yes. So, well, where, Skylar, do you have any other questions? None that I can think of. Awesome. Well, where else, where can our followers support you and how, yeah. what, what does that look like? So I have a website labeled Rosso um, and then Instagram also labeled Rosso. And uh, I'm trying to get into Twitter or X now, X. I guess, but I'm not really like super into social media. That's a class that I need to take is like social media marketing because it's hard, especially trying to figure out like the algorithms and everything. Even with TikTok, I'm thinking like, maybe I can document like this next collection somehow through TikTok. Cause I feel like there's a better possibility of blowing up there mm-hmm. and like getting more uh, foot traction on websites or even Instagram. So, but Instagram and website labeled Rosso. Awesome. Well, thank you, Paige. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank and you. and um, for anyone who is ever up in Boston, uh, just know that when you're pay- paying $40 an hour for parking, it was not Paige's fault, but she's going to be uh, forever coming back to Kansas City to park her car. So. I'm <laughs> renting a car next time. I've been Ubering everywhere, and I'm like, we should have just gotten a car. It would have been so much cheaper. Right. Like At the end of it, we're probably paying the exact same amount for Ubering than we would have been for like, yeah. So, but yeah, now I know because I was like, oh, we're going to have trouble parking the rental car. But now I know there's parking everywhere. So <laughs> I'm not worried about it. You live and you learn. Yes. You live and you learn. So awesome. Well, thank you again. Thank and you. as the tarot card would say, it's over. Death yeah, card. So yeah. one door's closing and next one's opening. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for watching another episode of the Fashion Hive podcast. Again, it was a pleasure to have Paige with Labeled Rosso on our show today. Skylar, thank you. Uh, as always, you always have some good questions. So, yeah. Although, thro- given some Bobby vibes, Bobby Altoff vibes. So you already know. Yeah. So all right, Reverend underscore Sans is where you can follow me. Fashion High Podcast, Skylar. Where can they follow you? You can follow me on Instagram at Skylots, and that's S K Y L A U T Z. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. Thank you.